100 years of Richard Wagner, celebrating a genius. In the interview, opera director Katharina Wagner. Hello, Katharina Wagner. Hello, Katharina Wagner. Thank you for making time for us shortly before your great-grandfather's 200th birthday. We're in a very special space here, a so-called lost space. There are a lot of them in Berlin, like this abandoned bakery. What fascinates you about these deserted locations? Was fasziniert Sie eigentlich so an diesen sogenannten verlassenen Orten? I think ultimately it's connected to stage design. What's fascinating is that you can find a lot of elements for set design. You can take interesting photos that can't necessarily be translated one-to-one -one into stage design. But if you are a set designer, you say, that's an interesting image, and then something develops from that. They're just great locations where you can really take great photos. I take a lot of photos privately, too, of interesting locations, and places like this are part of that. This is a great location. Can you imagine staging a performance in a place like this, in opera or musical theatre? Um, I can imagine it, but on the other hand, you know what the legal restrictions are like. I'd have to see what the authorities would say if you wanted to put something on here, fire escapes, that kind of thing. As great-granddaughter, head of the festival and director, you're involved with the works of Richard Wagner pretty much around the clock. Are you still able to look objectively at the work of your great-grandfather? That's a difficult question. I think the problem is, if you grow up with something like that and are so familiar with it, then you can't really say you're impartial, because you're so familiar with the material, you grow up with it, and it's simply a part of you. To that extent, the familiarity is just so big. Of course, you can try to be as impartial as possible, or to view it as critically as possible. That's a different issue. But the familiarity is an inevitable part of having constant contact with it. How do you create distance for yourself? You also work as a director. So if you're staging a work by your great-grandfather, what are the interesting aspects for you there? You've done so much of it so often already. I think that's always the question for a director. What interests them about a work? What's relevant for me about this work right now? What fascinates me? I don't do historical productions. For me, every day, every moment, every change can play into a stage production. As a director, I can't negate the past or what is happening in the present. And I think especially with Wagner's works, it's about basic elements of the human condition, basic characteristics such as jealousy, power, love, hate. Those are natural things that will always somehow be current, as long as humanity is around. So I think that Wagner's works are very contemporary, because they reflect on what are simply basic human traits. As long as humanity survives, these issues will be very interesting. Anyone around the world can enjoy Wagner's opera with excellent performers. Why should they come to Bayreuth? First of all, because Bayreuth is a very special place. The festival hall simply has the world's best acoustics, at least the most unique acoustics, but in a totally positive way. If you hear Parsifal there, you feel the music from all around, from under your chair, the side, from above. It's really an acoustic miracle. On the other hand, you've got an excellence in Bayreuth defined by a certain atmosphere. The people go and look forward to it, give up their holidays. We shouldn't forget that. The working conditions are quite unique. People want to work in Bayreuth. That makes for outstanding quality and really good rehearsal conditions. For instance, we can usually offer rehearsals with original props and scenery, not rehearsal sets, and you can really see the benefit and the artistic result. And as I said, people come to Bayreuth because of the positive atmosphere, and they want to spend their vacation there. You really notice that, and how the special atmosphere is really good for the art, for the end result. Let's talk about the legend of Bayreuth. 
I know you're not a fan of the mystification of the location. Is the Bayreuth festival just a festival like any other? No, I think it's more what I was just referring to. First, if you look at it objectively, we simply have really unique acoustics, and that's one reason why the house is unique. And of course it's special for a composer to have an opera house built just for his own works. That's quite special. I also think that the location and the pleasure people have in working there, which is really completely voluntary, is also hugely beneficial. It's really fun, and you see that in the artistic result. You acted as a child in the festival hall, so you've pretty much grown up with the works of your great-grandfather and the entire Wagner family history. Was there ever an option not to become a director or not to become director of the Bayreuth festival? Well, that option was always there, but I was just too interested in it all. My parents never pushed me and said, you have to do this. It came from watching, especially the directing. The questions were always, how would one do that differently? How would one do it oneself? It was a completely natural process. You took over the festival in 2008 with your half-sister Eva. What's changed? Has your view of Bayreuth and the whole festival changed? I think the structural changes have been fairly serious. There's been a change from one proprietor, our father, to three publicly owned shareholders and one private shareholder. The change to a limited company as the legal entity has brought with it a lot of changes. And they're still really in the adjustment phase. As great as the fascination for the music of Richard Wagner is around the world, there is also a great deal of skepticism. In Israel, for example, his music remains unaccepted. Historians accuse the family of continuing to hinder research into the involvement with the Nazi period. How are you dealing with that? Um, yeah. Unfortunately, we can't always control that because we don't have everything to control it with. But of course, we do try to make things accessible to the public as much as possible. And for my part, that's what I've done. Things are being put into the archives so that they are completely accessible. But of course, there is still material in the family that belongs to all the heirs. And this is an important part. Of course, I cannot decide alone what happens to that material. What kind of materials? I don't know. I don't have access to them. There are rumors that it's correspondence between Winifred and Hitler. You promised to do something, to work on clearing that up. But not much has happened. Well, for my part, where I have access, something has happened. I've spoken to various archives, and the materials will be going into our archives soon. The problem is that when it belongs to four heirs, I have to reach agreement with them because it's not my sole property. So I can't say I'm going to throw this at the feet of the public tomorrow. I have to see that everyone's pulling in the same direction and then make the material available. That requires a lot of patience. If it were up to me, it would all have been publicly accessible long ago. What's the biggest innovation you've made so far? Oh God, innovation is such a big word. You know, if someone brings a new medication onto the market, that's innovation. So I think we shouldn't get too carried away. But an idea where you think, I've done that, I've changed that. That's different. An innovation in the art world. I think we've done a lot of wonderful things, but the word innovation should affect humanity in a different way. 
Certainly one nice thing is the children's opera, and that's been really successful. It's a great opportunity, and artistically we're trying to do it at the highest level. Another great thing is Wagner in the cinema, a live broadcast that can be watched in movie theaters. Those are great things. Of course, starting in 2016, I think you can say you'll really see what Eva Wagner Paski and Katharina Wagner have done in the way of innovation. Then I think you can use the term innovation. But otherwise, innovation always carries a great weight. I think from 2016 you'll really see what we're responsible for. And of course, we hope that we found good artists. May 22nd is Richard Wagner's 200th birthday. There's not an opera house in the world that doesn't have his works in their program. How are you and Bayreuth celebrating? Bayreuth is celebrating the anniversary with a birthday concert in the festival hall, which is a big exception because normally we only ever have performances during the festival season. It means a huge organizational effort for us because the new ring is rehearsing on the stage right now. That means we have to take all that down and set up for the concert. The ring rehearsals have to be interrupted. So it's really a big deal putting on a concert like that in a year with a new ring production. All the musicians will gather together and will rehearse under conductor Christian Thielemann. Last question. The Bayreuth Festival only lasts six weeks. What do you do the rest of the year? I twiddle my thumbs. No, seriously. This year in particular, we've got the early works, three complete operas in partnership with Leipzig. We've got Rienzi in Bayreuth with Christian Thielemann in the Oberfrankenhall. And you can imagine that's not an opera house, but we're building a proper opera house into it. There'll be proper theater stalls. You can't imagine the logistics involved. The hall will be completely blacked out, acoustically remodeled. There's going to be a proper stage. So there's really a lot to do, because we're turning a fairly basic events venue into an opera house. I haven't just been working on that for this past year, but for the last three years. It's a crazy amount of work. But we wanted to have the three early works in Bayreuth in the Jubilee year. That was our big wish, because they've actually never been performed together like that. Katharina Wagner, thank you. You're welcome.